Hi everyone, good evening. I hope uh, I am audible and visible to all of you. If the live session is progressing well in terms of AV, just give me a confirmation in the chat box so that we can start off the recall session. Yeah, so I think uh, so far all okay from uh, my end. Hello, Atul. Thank you for the confirmation. And uh, I hope all of you did your exams well and uh, the stressful day of your life is all done. So now I think you all should just relax and just listen out to the questions and recalls if you are interested, just to have an understanding of how you probably have performed in your exams. And again, take this as a point for your NEET PG exams as well, so that this will help you give your NEET PG exam, uh, you know, in a more better way. And you can prepare yourself in the areas that you probably have gone wrong, or maybe you've done mistakes or silly things. So these, these sessions basically will help you understand that probably, you know, what are the right things you've done and what are the wrong things you've done yes so uh, with this uh, just a quick disclaimer that this is all recall based and uh, you know we do not know the actual language of the questions we do not know what were the actual options but whatever has been recalled by students uh, we try and put up that questions in front of you and uh, it would be much appreciated if you all can give your inputs in the chat box while we're discussing the question so that we get more realistically an idea of uh, you know uh, what was the actual language and what was the actual option so that we can put up the final uh, the final version of questions with the options on the app for all of you to re uh, refer back to at a later point of time great so let's start the questions so we have a question where uh, there was a question which of the following signs is not typically seen in allergic rhinitis so the question was not typically seen so you're supposed to answer which of the following sign is not seen in allergic rhinitis or very, very simple question. So it was allergic shiners, allergic salute, that was auto varigat folds and Dennis Morgan lines. So I think if you know the answer, quickly type it in the chat box so that we can move to the next question very quickly. What did you all guys mark? Yes, I'm waiting for your answers in the chat box because a very simple question. Allergic rhinitis is again a very, very simple chapter. And of course, we've already learned multiple signs of allergy where we see that there are dark circles around the eyes, which we call it as allergic shiners. There are small folds below the eyelid or the lower eyelid crease, which is called as the Denny Morgan line. And then we have this patient who has constantly rubbing the nose that we call it as allergic salute. But Otto Vergat folds are seen in patients with dip so they are basically triangular folds near the medial canthus and uh, this triangular fold is usually indicative of patients who have depression. So this thing that you see dark lines are called as allergic shiners. These folds are called as Denny Morgan folds. This is your allergic salute. And of course, this triangular fold that you see near the medial canthus is suggestive to you of the uh, depression. And uh, that is something that was your except answer where we mark that auto varget lines or auto varget folds are suggestive to you of depression and not of allergy. That was a basic question. Let's go to the next one. Again, a simple basic question, which we constantly tell that this is a uh, most repeated topic, whether it is FMG, whether it is NEET, whether it is INICT, this is the favorite topic of every examiner in each and every exam. And ENT exam is never complete without this question. So can you all answer that there is a 13 year, they have given you boy, they have given you unilateral obstruction and very importantly, recurrent epistaxis. So when Whenever you have boy, epistaxis, juvenile, what else can be the answer? There cannot be any other answer other than JNA and I'm sure each one of you have marked this right and this is something that I don't need to explain. It is self-explanatory that juvenile angiofibroma is seen in juvenile age group. As the name suggests, angio is extremely vascular and uh, the blood vessels lack the media layer which is why they bleed recurrently which is profuse and it is not one episode but there are multiple episodes of bleeding. So very easy question. I'm not going to go into discussion because I'm sure all of you would have marked it right. Okay, the next question, which of the following interventions should not be done 
in an eight year old child with bilateral sensory neural hearing loss so they're asking you a question what should not be done so they're telling you the patient is having bilateral snhl they didn't mention to you it's mild moderate severe whatever so they're telling if there is a child who has snhl what should you not do should you give a preferential sitting in the classroom adenoidectomy with grome hearing aid or cochlear implant so can you all tell me what is the answer should not be done so which is the ex accept answer or which is a false statement over here very good tamanna snehal devrat dikshit absolutely right the correct answer over here is going to be adenoidectomy with grome now let me explain this question to you so the question is talking to you with bilateral snhl so if there is a child who is having bilateral sensory neural hearing loss if the child falls in moderate or moderately severe category or sometimes even profound we always start by giving the child hearing aid because if the child can perceive the sound that's when the child can the child will be able to speak but here they have given you an eight year old child which means that this is not a congenital hearing loss could have been an acquired hearing loss so they have not mentioned to you the severity so first and foremost is hearing aid one of the solutions for the problem which is snhl yes now if there is a child who has snhl mild moderate severe whatever should he be sitting in the front rows of the classroom yes so preferential sitting in the classroom where he is given front rows yes why are we giving preferential sitting it's not just for the patient to hear well but also because they have this uh, ability to read the lips and understand the articulation of the lips to understand the words and then that helps them understand or grasp the subject a little bit more better now if there is a bilateral snhl which is profound in this situation is when we use a cochlear implant so is that a solution for bilateral snhl yes when it is a profound severe to profound snhl we will use a cochlear implant so all of them are options except b because in adenoid in children with a uh, who require adenoidectomy and grome those are the children who will have conductive hearing loss they will have serious otitis media so you don't need to uh, you know do for snhl grome insertion so that's the answer okay next question which of the following sign is not associated with otitis media with effusion so which sign would you not see in a patient with otitis media with effusions can you all tell me uh, what is not there it's quite a simple question so one option i couldn't recall thank you uh, purna subramanyam i i hope uh, many students get benefited like you because the ultimate aim of doing all of these classes and all of these sessions is to give all of you guys the maximum benefit of learning so that you are able to achieve the dreams that you always wanted to and if in that dream achievement if somewhere i play a small role i think i'll be more than happy for that yes so here whenever we are talking about otitis media with effusion and what is not associated we know that som is usually bilateral so it is bilateral is a true statement do you get ad curve no you get a b type of a graph on tympanometry so this is your wrong statement and then mostly resolves on its own yes it resolves on its own which is why the initial therapy is wait and watch for spontaneous resolution so if it doesn't resolve in the first 3 months or 12 weeks that's when we treat the cause by doing an adenoid Adenoidectomy, and then we also also remove the effusion by doing myringotomy, and we ventilate the middle ear by inserting a grome. So it resolves on its own is also very very true, which is why we wait and watch in the initial treatment of patients with SOM. So if you have the options of the third option which I am missing, can you all let me know in the chat box? Thanks, vibes in Telugu. So if you all can recall what was this option, it will be nice so that when we upload on the app, we'll get a complete question for all of you. Okay, so let's go to the next question. So I think this question, uh, some of you uh, would be thinking this is a medicine question, but this is a purely, purely ENT question. I'll explain you why. So here's a question where they said that there's a 42 year old obese male presenting to you with disturbed sleep and daytime somnolence. All the following are correct except. So they're asking you all of the following are correct except. So the question is talking to you about a condition which is called as OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Now OSA is a uh, is a uh, is a speciality or a sub speciality that I would say that most ENT surgeons are also treating. So we as ENT surgeons should know about OSA and the basics of OSA. 
So Tapaswini, thank you for giving me the other option in the previous question, presence after common cold, right. I think that is very true because we know common cold is responsible for causing serious otitis media. That's a true statement. So we, I think we got the four options and thank you so much for that. Okay, so we'll come back to this question and uh, we were discussing about uh, obese male OSA. So is there apnea with awakening, apnea with fallen saturation, parental muscle contraction increases OSA and hypercapnia with apnea. So which of the following are correct except? So if we see obstructive sleep apnea, there is an obstruction in the airway. So somewhere the airway is getting obstructed. It could be at the level of nose and the nasopharynx. It can be at the level of oropharynx, it can be level at the hypopharynx and it can be at the level of larynx as well. So somewhere in your upper airway there is an obstruction because of which the patient is having disturbed sleep. So what happens here, the patient breathes in, breathes out. So there is inspiration, expiration every night but there are periods of apnea where 10 seconds or more the patient is not breathing. So when the patient is not breathing for 10 seconds or more and we say it as apnea, will there be hypoxia? of course there will be hypoxia so fall in saturation would be seen of course when there is hypoxia will there be hypercapnia because of carbon dioxide retention yes there will be hypercapnia because of hypercapnia will the respiratory centers be stimulated yes so with this uh, okay purna i think respiratory effort that is also true because the respiratory centers are stimulated there is increased respiratory effort and when there is increased respiratory effort the patient will awaken so there is hypercapnia that stimulates the respiratory centers, the patient wakes up and again there is obstruction, so there is increased breathing effort, so there is increased respiratory effort, that statement is also true. But does pharyngeal muscle contraction increase the OSA? No, it is relaxation because if the muscle is tight and contracted, the space is increased. If the pharyngeal muscles are nice and tight, what will happen? You will have a nice space for air to go in. But imagine if the pharyngeal muscles are relaxed and they are collapsing, they are obstructing the airway. So pharyngeal muscle relaxation increases the OSA. This has to be your answer. So the false statement is C. Okay. So I think uh, this one is sorted. We got the right option also, which I think somebody is saying that increased respiratory effort was there in the option. So I will change the option and we will make this final in our, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to the app. Okay, so the next question, structures passing between superior and middle constrictor of the pharynx. So I think this is also a very, very easy question. So we already know that between the base of skull, and superior uh, base of skull and the superior constrictor we call this space as sinus of morgagni and what are the structures passing through it it is remembered with the mnemonic letter where l stands for levator villi palatini a stands for auditory tube t stands for tensor villi palatini and a stands for ascending palatine artery so this was not the question. They asked you structures between superior and middle constrictor. So the structures passing here is styloglossus muscle and glossopharyngeal nerve. So these are the two structures that are passing between the superior and middle constrictor. Now what about the structure between middle constrictor and inferior constrictor? Superior laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels. Which branch of superior laryngeal nerve? It is your internal laryngeal nerve. And below the inferior constrictor, what are the structures that pass? Recurrent laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal vessels. So I think everybody would be sure about this, that it is the styloglossus muscle and the glossopharyngeal nerve that was asked. Yes. So the next question that we have was on the x-ray. If I believe that they have given you a occipital frontal view. So occipital frontal view, I always tell chin up is water's view, chin down is occipital frontal view. So when you want to see the frontal sinus, you put your chin down, right? So occipital frontal view was the question and occipital frontal view is also called as Caldwell's view. And this is for which sinus? This is for identifying the frontal sinus. So you can clearly make out that this is your frontal sinus. So I think these were the questions which I got so far. If you have got any more questions in your list, please let me know in the chat box so that uh, we can have a quick discussion over that. Ye question nahi ta anonymous, fine. So we'll just take that off. But I think rest of the seven questions because so far we've had eight. So 
I think one question minus would make it seven. But I think ENT per se was not so bad. I think it was relatively easy. It was quite easy. Except that the quest options were a little twisted. But other than that, I think more or less everybody would have answered ENT questions. I'm absolutely confident about it. Samter's triad was asked. So if there was a question on Samter's triad, we will make noted now. So, Samter's triad is seen in patients with nasal polyposis. So, what are the components of the Samter's triad? There is allergy causing nasal polyposis. There is asthma. And there is aspirin sensitivity. They are sensitive to aspirin. So, why did I write allergy causing nasal polyposis? Because in nasal polyps, we have a condition called as anthroquinal polyps. So, Samter's triad is not a triad seen in anthroquinal polyp. It is seen in ethmoidal polyps, which is secondary to allergy. So, here we see nasal polyposis, asthma, and they are sensitive to aspirin. Okay, so if it was not Samter's triad, then I don't know. If it was there, I am just discussing it out. Any other questions that you have? Allergic rhinitis features I have already discussed, Tapaswini. We have already done that as the first question, if you see. We have discussed what we do not see is the otovarigoth folds, which are seen in depression. But other, th other than that, all the other three features are seen in allergic rhinitis. So, just to review, whatever we have done, simple questions, allergy, JNA, uh, SNHL and then otitis media with effusion, obstructive sleep apnea, structures between middle and inferior uh, constrictor and then your x-ray which I don't know if was asked or not asked. So, with this I think I should take your leave. If there are any questions that you feel were missed by me or you think any options were a little different, uh, feel free to uh, write it in the comment section below and uh, we will uh, respond to you as early as possible. Take care guys. Thank you. Thank you.